The other thing that people want to know is like how do the statins affect it? And in Jupiter, we had this opportunity to evaluate because Jupiter was a randomized trial where we assigned half the patients to receive a statin, which is a high-intensity statin, 20 milligrams a day, versus placebo. What we found was that the individuals who were randomized to receive a 20 um, had very similar association in terms of the protective role. So it's you know, um, so even if they're on a statin, if they have a large number of HDL particles, that was even more protective. We're living in a very exciting era where these um, now we have several large trials, uh, very, very large trials that are evaluating the role of PCSK9 inhibitors. Um, right now, the data so far that we have is um, really limited to how do these um, agents affect the lipid and lipoprotein particles, but we don't really have enough outcomes data. Um, in the trials that have been, the small studies that have been conducted to date, we have a very limited number of events, so we cannot really conclude. Um, um, but that's why we're waiting the big, big trials. And I think um, next year, hopefully, we should have um, some of those exciting results. Um, however, I think this, um, uh, you know, HDL, these PCSK9 inhibitors, et cetera, do not particularly affect the HDL. Um, uh, some other agents are, are right now actually being developed specifically to target the HDL. For example, there are these agents that increase or provide you with an additional num number of these particles. And, um, and they're being tested in humans as well as in animal studies to see, well, um, you know, if you're lacking those HDL particles and I'm telling you, well, having more of them is protective, then maybe we can just provide you with some and then they, your body will kind of absorb them and, and they function like the other HDL particles. So that's what now there's a lot of interest in trying to develop these, although it's been more of a challenge than for the LDL, which is more where PCSK9 inhibitors play a role. You know, the number one way to prevent cardiovascular disease, whether stroke or heart attack or heart failure or peripheral arterial disease, any of these, is really lifestyle. Um, so diet, uh, having a healthy um, diet that's more of a Mediterranean type diet is very important. And actually, what we found is for um, exercise, Mediterranean diet, um, many of the things that we, you know, we know are good weight loss, um, they actually all improve our HDL. Um, uh, we know that some drugs that also improve HDL did not work. So we know that there's different ways to improve our risk factor profile and it truly really matters how you do it. So if you're doing the lifestyle, the proper lifestyle things, for example, stopping smoking if you're a smoker or losing weight if you're overweight, being more active physically, exercise really uh, improves the HDL, weight loss improves the HDL, um, and also eating more healthy diet. For example, um, um, olive oil can really increase also the HDL. Um, alcohol, um, again, in moderate doses, um, I mean, of course, it increases the HDL at the higher doses, but the doses recommended for cardiovascular protection are in the moderate range. I always tell my patients there's an 80-20 rule, or if you like it, the 90-10 rule, depending on the patient. So if you do the right thing 80% of the time or 90% of the time, you know, that's really what we aim for. Uh, nobody can be perfect 100% of the time. And of course, actually, you may not want to be 100% you know, of the time. But if you're able to do most of the, um, uh, you know, incorporate a healthy lifestyle within the regular activities of one's day, and that's really the goal, is to make it part of a habit, part of, um, you know, um, behavioral change required is more than one thing um, uh, and even taking medications is still a behavior change you have to remember to take the medication so um, you know uh, learning ways to incorporate these um, into daily life is very important